Nature likes symmetry and balance. We can see this in the body plan of all vertebrates and most invertebrates. Extremities and organs often come in pairs or in symmetrical groupings. Even the brain, which is often considered a singular organ, has two hemispheres and is apparently symmetric. But in 1865, the French physician Paul Broca presented his research into the brain's language center, demonstrating that, at least for language, the brain wasn't symmetrical. Autopsies revealed a very common trend. The brains of those with large lesions or abnormalities on their left frontal lobe belong to those with great difficulty in producing language. The discovery of this area, which would soon be named after him, kick-started a new field of research mapping out the distinct computing regions in the brain. As time would reveal, it would seem our brain is anything but symmetrical. Brain lateralization is what we call the isolation of specific tasks to different sides of the brain. Some mechanisms, like language processing, are isolated to the left hemisphere of the brain and others to the right. But why do this? Unfortunately, when it comes to organism physiology, we can never say exactly and definitively why something exists the way it does. The only completely correct answer is simply that evolution determined that's the best way for things to be in that environment. So although one can never say why there's lateralization in the brain, we can explain why it makes sense and present some experiments to back up that assumption. The first reason lateralization makes sense is to reduce redundancy and promote efficiency and reaction speeds. Life is a constant struggle to survive. That means any mistake could mean death and thus it's very important for an organism to be at peak performance. Because of symmetry, almost all organisms have at least two ways to interact with the world. Be that seeing with the eye of a hawk or skillfully placing the front hoof of a mountain goat, each action can be performed with the left or right side. It's therefore important that each interaction with the world is as skillfully executed as possible. If a hawk has trouble tracking prey or if a mountain goat missteps, it can bring consequences. To hone their skills to perfection and maximize survivability, it's a better use of an organism's time to train or prefer one side to the other. Imagine if every painter, guitarist, or tradesman had to be equally skilled with their other hand. It would require even more time and effort to achieve the same skill level, a redundant effort since you can achieve the same result either way. We can see this in pigeons. Pigeons have a dominant eye, and so they can see and navigate space better with that eye. When hungry pigeons were placed in front of a trough full of grain and pebbles, they would start pecking away. If you cover one of their eyes, pigeons will consistently be more efficient with their pecks when using their dominant eye, usually their right eye. The second reason for lateralization is the ability to multitask. It would be quite a different life if we could only think and process one thing at a time. By segmenting and compartmentalizing different tasks in our brains, we can easily process multiple stimuli and thus be aware of threats even when preoccupied. We can see advantages of lateralization very early in the eyes of chicks. Normally, the chick's position in the egg causes one eye to not be exposed to light. As a result, the light-exposed eye becomes their dominant eye. However, if you keep the egg in darkness, the chick develops no lateralization and thus no dominant eye. We can see the impact of multitasking when chicks are placed in an environment with food and simulated predators flying overhead. This meant the chicks had to be focused on finding food and watching for predators. The non-lateralized chicks failed to react to predators at the same rate as their lateralized counterparts. They also often mistakenly picked up pebbles instead of grain, highlighting their difficulty in focusing on one task. The last reason for lateralization is for protection. The hemispheres of all vertebrate brains, as far back as evolutionary biology can tell, control the opposite sides of the body. This is called contralateral control. It's quite the strange phenomenon, and due to its prevalence from such an early period in life, it's hard to be certain why it exists. One such theory is that it increases survivability. When an organism suffers a non-crippling injury, neural pathways will develop in their brains to help mediate and work around the limitation. This is as simple as developing a limp to prevent excess strain on an injury. If an organism suffers an injury to one side of their body and brain, the brain injury could inhibit the nervous system to properly respond to an injury and thus greatly decrease the rate of recovery. With contralateral control, a localized injury will almost never occur along with damage to the opposite brain hemisphere. 
It's unclear if this was the deciding reason for evolution to choose this trait, but it's abundantly clear it's the correct one as no vertebrate develops differently. Brain lateralization naturally yields a dominant side for physical tasks. In most people, that's their right side. But left and right preference is not a uniquely human trait. Chimpanzees also usually prefer right-handedness, but to a lesser extent than humans. Cockatoos, however, are almost exclusively left-footed. It was thought that handedness was something we inherit from our surroundings. If we see our parents or teachers writing with a certain hand, we would copy them. But studies of children raised by step or adoptive parents showed that their development of handedness was independent of their non-biological parents. That is to say, there's a genetic component. In zebrafish, central nervous system asymmetry gets established very early in development from the distribution of growth factors in early cells. Although it's unclear which asymmetry is responsible for which phenomenon, it's clear, at least in zebrafish, asymmetry is part of the game plan from very early on. Even though we still can't point at a gene or epigenetic cocktail that's responsible for handedness in organisms, it seems clear that being lateralized is an intrinsic part of vertebrae biology. Despite nature's affinity for balance and symmetry, it would seem computing is almost exclusively done asymmetrically and in parallel with other tasks. Although all sections work together, our brains have very distinct boundaries and roles that clearly separate them from one another. Because of this separation of processing, really fantastic and curious anomalies can occur when you control when and how information is processed and exchanged throughout the brain. I hope you join me in the next video as we further explore the roles of our two brains and what happens when those roles get disrupted.